Let's check in with Sadiq Adatia, one of our regular guests here on The Open, Chief Investment Officer at BMO Global Asset Management. Sadiq, nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Your takeaway from the inflation report. Yeah, you know, as we've been always talking about that, we think that Bank Canada should be ready to cut rates at this, at this time. And this CPI report, I think, supports that case. But I still don't think they're going to go ahead in April. I think they're still going to wait a little bit longer. Um, and I don't know if they want to get too far ahead of the Fed as well on cutting rates. So I think that's the other thing they're keeping in mind because the Fed continues to push out you know, their um, interest rate uh, forecast as well. But I do think the data, you know, like from the housing situation to inflation to a cooling economy, I think all those signs say now's the time to start to you know, cut rates and progressively you know, do that throughout the year. But I, again, I don't think they're going to do it in April. In part because this is a like a pivot means you're cutting rates and you're starting that process. That's exactly. It's not a one and done. It, you, when you do this, you're, you're indicating to the market that we're going to continue down this path for the foreseeable future, right? So if you're thinking about I cut and then I pause, then you know you might be thinking, well, why don't I just pause first before I start cutting? And I think the Bank of Canada has always been a little bit more hawkish than you would have normally thought, and therefore, you know, I think this information helps them. I don't know if it actually takes them over the line to, to again, push in April. So that's helpful context for those who are curious about when the interest rate cycle or the, the cutting cycle begins. And the, because we center this conversation around the monthly meetings, everyone's got all these different opinions to throw out different numbers out there. There were, there were some people who thought it might be possible for the bank to cut as soon as April. Um, but we certainly saw some pushback on that idea from the Bank of Canada governor at the recent rate announcement, you, you're you're not in that camp. Um, but to your earlier point, you know, for, for those who thought maybe the U.S. Federal Reserve would start cutting rates by June, even that is starting to. Yeah, I mean, we still think June is is a possibility. Okay. But I think if you go back two months ago, it was probably a higher probability than it is today. And I think the economy there is is better. You know, you have less worry about the consumer uh, in the U.S. So there's a less need to actually do anything. Yes, inflation is coming down. It's still stubborn at that current level. Yeah. And I think you know what the Federal Reserve wants to see is, is a, a nice step lower from there to give them comfort to say, you know what, we can start cutting rates. We'll, we'll see what they say. Obviously, they're, they're beginning their two-day process of making a decision on rates this week, and we're not expecting any decision on rate policy specifically, but we'll watch for those clues. And then in terms of the economy itself, like, how would you characterize the state of Canada's economy and with this, you know, projected move towards rate cuts, where do you see the economy as we move through the year? Yeah, I, I think Canada's economy is trending above, you know, above water is, is the best way I would say it. And, and it's holding there for a bit of time. And that's why I said I do think the rate cuts are needed to stay above that. And, um, you know, generally look across the, the economy, I'd say, you know, you've got strength in the energy sector for sure. Um, potential some life coming out of the uh, commodities market. Uh, I think the financials are actually okay. And, and though they have headwinds against them because of low loss provisions and what's going on broader, I do think that that's still an undervalued market. So when you think about the three big sectors in Canada, I think they're actually fairly fine. Um, but it's just broader. If we don't start to do things to stimulate the economy, then we can see a deterioration happening. And the consumer, again, is a big part of that. Okay, well, we'll watch what happens on the economic front. We'll talk with you in a little bit about some of those sectors and investing strategy for the TSX. We did have this news out of Japan <laughs> where they are finally raising rates, not by much, but 17 years in the making. For those who aren't familiar with what happened to Japan, why was it so long in between rate moves? Well, the first thing is, right, they, they had the negative interest rate uh, policy in place because they were worried about deflation. Um, and what they had seen, you know, over the last you know year or so, particular, is inflation be a little higher. I think in in Q4, inflation was at 4.2 percent. So that gave them some comfort coming through. GDP numbers were were finally positive, so they didn't get that recession. Um, and now inflation is probably around 2 percent. So at this stage, I think they felt very comfortable of moving away from that net interest rate policy, a negative interest rate policy, and slightly, as you said, going to zero to 0 0.1 on that policy level and still continuing with quantitative easing as well. Um, I think the economy, and as we've seen, you know, the markets in Japan have been exceptionally strong. So the timing is actually not a bad timing to do this. And you know, though again, it's marginal movement, it's just that psyche of from negative interest rates to more positive 
I think that's the important thing there. Yeah, and you're talking about the stock market as well there, which Warren Buffett seemed to like. And I think the we're I, positive on on Japan as well. Japan. I think you know people forget that you know Japan is an economy now that's that when you think about the stock market and companies there, they're focusing back on return on on capital. They're focusing on dividends. You know, they're, they're literally the being things. asked to do it. I think yeah, by, and, the, and, by and, the Tokyo Stock Exchange. And it's a yeah. shareholder friendly yeah. environment now yeah. that wasn't necessarily there before. So you're seeing money flow in. You're seeing like Warren Buffett jump in and double down, because that likely means that over a long period of time you're going to see a better shareholder value on those companies that wasn't present previously, and and we believe the same story as well.